Inside this weird box, there is not only the absolute best value CPU you can buy right now on the brand new market, but also the solution basically to the current RAM prices. Because by building a PC like this, you can absolutely avoid any problems with high priced DDR5. So with that said, welcome back to Odin PSUs and let's get straight into it. Now, what is this curious box with uh, Intel 13th Gen Core written on it? And is this something from Intel? And the answer is yes or no. This is a repackaged laptop CPU with a dual PCB, which you can buy on AliExpress. And it basically is an i9-12900HX. Now there are a lot of variants which you can choose and I will also guide you in this video on which CPU to buy specifically. In my case, I bought this one simply because it was the best value for money at the moment in which I made the purchase. Now, basically someone deep in China is buying broken laptops, desoldering CPUs, they made a custom PCB to adapt it on any LGA 1700 motherboards and then they're selling it to you on AliExpress. So it's technically not new. I mean, they also say they're sourcing them directly from the manufacturer, which I could actually believe. And they're saying they are new, but uh, I think it doesn't really matter because CPUs are some of the strongest PC parts. So they give you warranty as if it was brand new on AliExpress. So that's good enough for me. Al AliExpress warranty has gotten a bit better nowadays, but a little bit more info. So what this is, is literally a laptop i9-1200HX. So if you want to see the specs, you can just pull it up on the spec sheet for a laptop. But basically it has 24 threads and uh, the usual 16 cores, 24 threads with only the eight cores being hyper-threaded on this little thing. The main problem is it has the behavior of a laptop CPU. So it is severely power limited because you are expected to run it on a very thin laptop chassis. But that's its strong point, because if you go ahead and place it in a regular motherboard and put even the cheapest cooler, this is literally a cooler which I paid $4 for, if you put it with a cooler like this, this thing is gonna have plenty of room to boost higher, which means you can make it boost a lot higher. They haven't done any tuning out of the box. This is exactly like it would be on a laptop. Now, how much does this cost? Well. Standard price is 150 bucks, 149 bucks on AliExpress. We'll put the link to it down below. But there are coupons all the time on AliExpress. Now, sure, you can go ahead and buy this on a regular time as well. But with AliExpress, the thing is, the prices, if you just look at them, they're decent, but they're not insane. The prices get very, very good if you capitalize on the AliExpress system, which is very strange. Basically, they give you coupons, which you can only use on certain items, and they give you other discounts, which you can only use on certain items. They also give you coins via the app, which you can grab and basically use to get discounts. Basically, if you spend around 10 minutes understanding how things work, and if you wait for a coupon to be dropped, which you can see in the homepage on AliExpress, you're gonna say like promotion ends in, and that's the time until the refresh. So if there are no coupons, you wait until the time expires, and then you get new coupons. But this is not an AliExpress tutorial. This is just to say that I paid 115 bucks for this thing, which is crazy. Just to be clear, I am recommending it even at full price, but uh, you should not pay full price. You should get minimum 15% discount. So around 20 bucks less is what you should get, and paid around 150. 30 bucks for the i9, which does make it an insanely good deal. How does it work? Well, it's plug and play. Yes, but not really. They sell you with these two screwdrivers. What you need to do is unscrew the socket on your motherboard, which if it is your first time building a PC and you're not like mechanically inclined, may scare you a little bit, but you trust me, it's gonna be very simple. I'm gonna show you how I did it in the video right here. You basically unscrew the four screws on the socket before installing the CPU. You take them off, then you put two washers on the holes and put in the new screws, which they give you with the CPU. They literally give you two screwdrivers, four screws and eight washers. You mount it back and that will lift up the socket a little bit. And at that point, you can go ahead and mount the CPU. I will show you now proper footage of the CPU. And as you can see, it is double the height of a regular CPU clearly, because they have an adapter PCB under the regular PCB. And that's what makes it compatible for regular motherboard. Crazy, that, but the only thing separating the CPU from working here is just an adapted PCB. It's literally compatible out of the box. That means this can work on every single motherboard in the market for LGA 1700. I'm talking all the way from a B660, B760, Z690, Z790, any single one of those, it's gonna work perfectly fine. Drop in upgrade. Now the major difference, because this is an unlocked laptop CPU, and on laptops you have 
locked chipsets which means if this is unlocked on a locked chipset this is going to be unlocked on every motherboard so you can literally run this on a b760 and still have full overclocking capabilities but it's not that simple you can actually do a few things better on a z series chipset so if you can buy on the used market a z790 ddr4 motherboard for cheap what you can do is grab some ddr4 which the used market is full of grab some ddr4 which is not affected by the shortage of the ram well it is affected but artificially it's not really affected because no one is buying brand new ddr4 it's just people are increasing the prices for no reason but in terms of buying ram just check out my how to buy ram in 2025 video like the video in which i talk about the shortage i will put it up here just check it out and basically i give you some tips for the used market but you buy some cheap ddr4 ram like i have here i got some kim tigo ram for this build and then you can overclock this thing so high and this has very good control for ddr4 so you can push ddr4 very high and even on a b series motherboard you can overclock your ram but that's when the z series is going to come in hard because with the z series motherboard you can do a lot better if you do that and simply unlock two power limits i will have a full tutorial out on how to play around with those cpus okay but you can do it by yourself as well you're gonna have a beast of a cpu you are not gonna reach 1200k performance out of the box unless you delete it to really reach it you would have to again take off the lid and direct die mount the cpu with liquid metal which i think is a little bit uh, like i don't really recommend you do that even though i love deleting and i love direct die mounting just because the level of time effort and extra things you need to spend on it i think defeat the purpose of buying this uh, i think if you're buying this you want to simply mount it in a build like this very cheap motherboard cheap cooler and leave it not at stock but just slightly improved and it's going to be a great cpu now you keep hearing me say it's great cpu let's bring some data to cover this up so first of all the cpu z score i will also show you how the chipset is read and as you can see you don't read the code model in cpu z you just read how many cores and threads and the frequency frequency is actually pretty high i will let you take a look at the fire score with the hardware monitor report for the frequency you can see it boosts pretty high you can actually get five gigahertz easy if you tweak it but stock is like this it's losing compared to 700k but how is it performance wise i want to say performance wise uh, in single thread is exactly like an i7 12700k which of course you can buy in the used market for around the price at which you can buy this but this is a lot faster in multi-thread and if you tweak it you're going to be right in between a 12700k and a 12900k another good thing is not everywhere there is a good used market and this you can buy worldwide so you can just click and get this one delivered to your home and i will also leave the link to the motherboard because i bought a very cheap motherboard on express as well basically for under 200 bucks i got motherboard cpu and queer try to beat this kind of value on this kind of range and now this i would pair easily with a used rtx 3090 if we're still talking 3000 series cards or more likely with a used rtx 4070 or 4070 super i think it's the perfect pairing now in this build i went with a 4060 just because it's a lower end build and uh, it's more of a productivity build but for gaming all the way up to a 4070 is a perfect match you can also get uh, on the newer side like an rx 9070 if you're playing at 1440p and you want an amd card you can also get on the used market an rx 7800 xt i think is the exact perfect match for this cpu i will also show you the benchmark in apex legends and as you can see it's doing very well it's maxing out fully the 4060 which of course it's not impressive we were expecting that but it's still nice to see which cpu should you buy because you can also buy a 13th gen i7 on aliexpress uh, which is actually the same price as this if not cheaper and uh, if you're only gaming you should buy based on generation so you should buy the newest possible generation now 14th gen cpus they're overpriced 13th gen is what you should get so 13th gen i7 is exactly what you should buy it's the absolute best value for money and i think you should go out and get it if you need the extra cores if you're after the productivity performance if you care even a little bit about having an i9 and you want the best silicon for overclocking then you should get this one i think it's the absolute best value for money for productivity and it's why i got it with that said these cpus adapted ones haven't been around for long i've seen a few on 6 7 and 8 gen but not many this is the first time in history where we really see them being distributed in high quantity and actually working very well on any motherboard you can overclock on a locked motherboard on intel which is crazy you can buy it worldwide and drop it in in any motherboard with ddr4 with a very very good 
DDR4 controller because this controller is made for DDR5. I think this genuinely has no downside to it. With that said, let me know what you guys think. If you tried one and had a bad experience, please drop a comment down below. We need to hear the bad as well because so far it's only good. And uh, if you like the video, drop a like and subscribe. You can also now become a member, support the channel directly because I don't really take sponsors that much. And see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.